This is the kind of life experience, whether you admit it or not, on some level, we want it. That peace will guard your minds. How? In Jesus. Everything we've listed has been, hey, stand firm in Jesus. Hey, agree in Jesus. Hey, labor together in Jesus. Hey, rejoice in Jesus. Hey, pray in the name of Jesus. And your result will be what? Peace in Jesus. Unfortunately, many Christians lack the joy that's available to them in Jesus. They don't know what it means to have joy in Christ. But you're about to see what it really practically means to rejoice in the Lord according to the scriptures. And you might just realize how much you've misunderstood this concept of biblical joy. I believe you're going to understand what it really means to rejoice in the Lord. And hopefully by the end of this, you'll find yourself overflowing with the joy of Jesus. So what does Philippians 4 really teach us about having lasting joy? Why don't many Christians experience this kind of joy? And what are some of the biggest misunderstandings that Christians have about this issue? Let's jump into the scriptures. Rejoice in the Lord always. And I wonder, could part of that be celebrating the fact that our names are in the book of life? What did Jesus tell the disciples after they came back from casting out demons? And they're going, dude, the demons, they actually left when we used your name. And Jesus goes, yeah, that's cool. Rejoice that your names are written in the book of life. Is is that maybe what Paul has in mind here? I think so. Is what can I always rejoice about? What is it that drives my labor and my service and my unity and my standing firm in the Lord and enduring and fighting and obeying and ministering and preaching when no one's listening? What drives that? is that my name, our names, are written in the book of life. And I can always rejoice about that. It is your choice to rejoice. Otherwise, Paul would not say, rejoice in the Lord. He would say, wait for God to cause you to rejoice. It is your choice and it is my choice to rejoice. And you go, we can't control our emotions, brother. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying manipulate your emotions and work yourself up into a frenzy. You can't. What you can do is focus on what promotes joy in your life. Meditate on, think through what promotes joy in your life. Give your attention and dedication to what promotes joy in your life. And frankly, many of you do not do that. You're waiting for joy. You know it's yours in Jesus, but you're actively thinking on things and watching things and listening to things and just fantasizing about things that drive the opposite emotions in your life, that drive the opposite experience. Like you're thinking on what promotes fear. You're meditating on what promotes anxiety. You're fantasizing on, uh, on things that promote lustful, covetous, adulterous thoughts that move you away from joy. So it is our choice to, again, magnify what promotes joy or focus on and magnify what promotes the opposite. Just, just try this today. Just today. Whenever you find yourself stressed worried, anxious, frantic, wanting control, fearing something won't work out, pause, recognize that, and then begin thinking about all that God has already done for you, all that he's promised, like just begin rehearsing these things out loud, thank God for them, jump on the thankfulness train, Lord, thank you that my name is written in the book of life, God, thank you that you finished the work of salvation. God, thank you that I'm born again and forgiven of all sin across time. Thank you. And watch how that begins to affect your disposition, your emotional and mental state. Watch. Just recognize it. So we're called to stand firm in the Lord. We're called to agree in the Lord and labor in the Lord side by side, which means we're doing some degree of service towards God and people. We're called to rejoice in the Lord. 
And verse 5 says, let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. So you're like, what? What does that have to do with anything? Well, he has just talked about how Jesus will transform our lowly body at the end of chapter 3. Glorification and resurrection is coming our way with Jesus when he returns to establish new creation once and for all. So, because that's happening and the Lord is at hand within reach, let's live reasonably. Like, if you make those claims, if you say you believe in those things, there is an appropriate and reasonable way to live in light of those truths. And part of that means not being anxious about anything in verse 6. Hey, if you don't know me, my name is Jason, and I have some free gifts for you on our website at abovereproachministry.com. Maybe you want to learn how to study the Bible. We have free Bible classes just for you. Are you maybe a newer believer? Go ahead and check out our Christianity 101 Foundations course. Maybe you hate videos. Well, we have a podcast, so you can listen to all of our messages on whatever podcast platform you prefer. Maybe you want to join or start a discussion group. Check out our map of all the current armed discussion groups all around the world. And do you maybe live near Greenville, South Carolina? If you do, you should check out our church. Visit movementchurchsc.com for more information. And if you'd like to partner with us financially, you can snag a copy of my book, Fruitful, or head over to the donate page and donate through debit or credit card, PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, Patreon, or even mail a check to P.O. Box 509 Inman, South Carolina. And if you want to make a ministry connection, feel free to reach out to me on our website. All right, I know that was a lot, but I'm done. So let's get back to the video. Here, here's what it means to live reasonably. Rejoice instead of being anxious. Joy and anxiousness are put against each other as opposites. The opposite of anxiety is joy. The opposite of joy is anxiety. So you can either rejoice or you can be anxious. What will you focus on? What will you magnify? What will you allow to govern your thoughts and your feelings right now? What will you allow to drive your decisions and move you? Will you be driven by fear of lack? Will you be driven by this worry that maybe I'll live alone for the rest of my life or maybe we won't have enough and we'll always be in an apartment and we'll always struggle to get by. Will you be driven by those things? Or will you in that moment, when those things start to creep in, choose to flip the script and rejoice in all that God has already done and said? Don't be anxious about anything. But here's how we practically promote joy as well. In everything by prayer... So I'm going to highlight this for you. By means of prayer, this is the method, and supplication, petition, with thanksgiving, right? Here's the way to do that. Let your requests be made known to God. Whatever it is you're anxious about, worried about, fearful about, stressed about, trying to control, afraid of happening, yeah, let that request be made known to God with petition and prayer and thanksgiving. And I think very often we, we, we kind of just stress in God's direction. You know what I mean? We're just, we're just uh, being anxious towards God. We're not praying. Because the way that Paul says we should pray about the things we're anxious about is with thanksgiving. So there's always something I can be thankful, thankful for no matter what the circumstance. And I know that's hard to believe because some of you are in some really, really tight situations, some incredibly difficult, gut-wrenching situations, and it's killing you inside. It's depression, it's suicidal thoughts, it's feeling like not enough, it's for months and months barely having enough to scrape by and have another meal. Some of you, like you're in the hospital and you got a diagnosis. I don't know what it is you're facing, okay? For some of you, your marriage is on the rocks and you're actually thinking that this could end in a couple weeks. Whatever you're facing, okay? Not to belittle those things and the facts of your life, but to say that we can always choose to thank God for something, and when you do, that is the heart that we bring as we make our requests known. Is thanksgiving is kind of the tunnel we're walking through 
to bring our requests to Him. It's a heart of gratitude. So we can stand firm in the Lord always. We can always agree in the Lord. We can always labor in the Lord. We can always rejoice in the Lord. And we can always be praying in the Lord. Always. Like there, there is nothing that can stop besides being unconscious. There is nothing that can stop you from doing these things. And they will happen in your life in varying degrees, in different ways, in different seasons. But here's the, here's the result in verse 7. The peace of God Almighty, which surpasses all understanding, which means you don't need to understand it to experience it. You don't need to logically make sense of how it's all happening in order to enjoy it. That peace will guard your hearts. That peace will guard your minds. How? In Jesus. Everything we've listed has been, hey, stand firm in Jesus. Hey, agree in Jesus. Hey, labor together in Jesus. Hey, rejoice in Jesus. Hey, pray in the name of Jesus. And your result will be what? Peace in Jesus. Jesus. This is the kind of life experience, whether you admit it or not, on some level, we want it. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, you might want to check out the full video right here, as well as another teaching that YouTube selected just for you. Don't forget to like this video to help us reach more people and subscribe for more biblical content just like this. And thank you so much for partnering with us financially to make this global ministry possible. Our mission is to move people towards Jesus by teaching them how to read the Bible so they can live and teach the Bible themselves. Be sure to check out the website and keep moving towards Jesus. I'll see you in the next video.